just see a show of hands. Who all's here on the Rennick case? I know you guys are. You in the media. Lot of, let, let's take that up first. Are they ready to go? Let's go right, right back there. Let's clear the courtroom a little bit here. You, you want to let him sit down, those two there sit down, Ms. King and Ms. Mr. Zellner. He can get out of the way. You guys just have a seat there. Hey, Mr. Mr. Hess. Okay, this, you ready, Guy? This case number 3007, State versus Lindley Rennick. State appears by uh, Prosecuting Attorney King and Assistant A.G. Zellner. Defendant appears with Attorneys Berger and Hesseman. Okay, Ms. Rennick, you'll recall, what day did we try this? 12? Uh, I think that ended on the 10th, Your Honor. Is that when the verdict came in? It was the 9th or the 10th, Your Honor. Do you remember the date? Was that when the, uh, the guilty verdict came in on the 9th? No. I think it all came in on the 10th. On the 10th, yeah. I think, and then they did the punishment stage. Okay. So the jury came back on December 10th um, of last year, 2021, and found you guilty of uh, murder in the second degree and armed criminal action. Uh, I'll note you appear here with your attorneys, um, and you will call all that happening on that date? Okay. Um, they recommended a... Uh, sentence of 13 years on count one and three years on count two, as I recall. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but I just want to make this clear on the record. Missouri law does not allow me to exceed the recommendation of the jury on punishment. Okay. I've gotten a bunch of letters going, give her way more than that. I can't do it. You can't do that under Missouri law, okay? So I just want to make that clear. I know some people probably won't hear that, but I can't, okay? Now, um, did you want to file a motion for, new, who's doing the talking here? Mr. Hesseman, did you want to file a motion for new trial? No. Okay, I didn't see one in case net. And you understand you're waiving then your right to appeal? That's correct. Okay, is that correct, Ms. Rennick? Okay, so there's no motion for new trial filed. And there's no, there's no appeal. Both of those are waived, correct? That's correct. All right. You want to say anything on that, Mr. Zellner? No, I'm going to just leave that. Okay. All right. I'm going to say defendant files no motion for new trial and waives any appeal. Okay, so does either side want to adduce evidence? We're going right into final disposition then. Okay, I read that. Okay, okay, noted.
You want to say anything about the SAR? Okay. SAR received, filed, and considered. Does anybody want to adduce evidence? Is that something you filed before? I don't know if I've read that. No, you have not. No. Okay, okay. It, it came after. Okay, you want to let him see it? I, I've received, Your Honor, an email that I think has what he's showing you. You just want to make sure it's the same thing? Okay, well, so you're considering this adducing evidence and it, you're going to call the guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. In other words, I think he just had a statement of however you want to do it. But it's not this, right? Correct. Okay. In addition to that, that letter. Okay. Okay. Um, States Exhibit 125 is admitted. Do you want this filed or do you want me to? All right. Okay. You can file it. I, okay. Now, you want to put on, the way I do it is just put them on. And then he's got an opportunity to cross if he wants to. Okay. So call your witness. Come on through here. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you will now give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Have a seat. Okay, Mr. Zellner. Could you please introduce yourself to the judge? Yes, I'm Samuel Rennick. I'm brother of Benjamin Rennick. And are you the same Sam Rennick that, well, you sat through the entire trial, as you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and you're the Sam Rennick that literally tried to tell the police you were responsible for this crime, correct? Yes, sir. Have you prepared a, a statement that you would like to read to the court? I have. Your Honor, at this time, could I ask permission for him to read yes, that statement to the court? <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Samuel Rennick. I am the older brother of the late Benjamin Rennick. We're gathered here today because of the premeditated actions of Lenny Rennick, which include the murder and execution of my 29-year-old brother and father, too. Regarding the verdict, unfortunately, even though the jury is instructed not to have sympathy or to allow their feelings to stand in the way of the facts, we feel that this injustice has, in fact, taken place in this case. We thank the state prosecution team for their hard work in this trial, and we hope that the facts would speak for themselves. I beg the common person to watch the trial again and ask themselves if my brother's life was worth only 16 years. 16 years is why I'm here today. Uh, Judge Crane, there's a chance that I might have criticized you a time or two in the past. I want to thank you for your work in this case. I appreciate what you do, and we respect the position that you were in. I'm here today to ask for the maximum possible sentence of Lenny Rennick despite the verdict that we feel was far inferior to what it should have been. I once again refer to the evidence, the premeditation, the cover-up of actions before, during, and after my brother was executed. To this day, I truly believe that Lindley Rennick was the one that pulled the trigger and loaded eight bullets into the back of my brother, Benjamin Rennick. And I believe that evidence strongly supports that. Lindley covered up her actions for years, and she told countless lies to protect herself and to deceive others about her involvement in this case. After creating an alibi, her and Michael drove his car to our family property to murder Ben so that her car would not be seen. After executing my brother and cleaning up the evidence of her involvement, she immediately proceeded to build a web of lies that touched so many people. She led me directly to my brother's body and then put on a show, an act, 
a display that will forever haunt me for the rest of my days. She cried over my brother's dead body, yelling, why, how, pretending to me that she did not know what she had done to this beautiful young man. She put the children through this experience. Here I am, covered in my brother's blood, attempting to comfort the children, despite them asking me if their daddy is dead. What Lindley Rennick has done to her children will forever be unforgivable. Ben was about to turn 30 years old. He was a great father of two that he loved. He's a great father of two children that he loved more than life itself. And his life was stolen from him by the sheer greed of Lindley Rennick. Ben was very talented. That talent brought him success. He never could have imagined, however, that this success would cost him his life. Ben would have never been able to have imagined being murdered by his wife, as all of us would soon find out to be the case. Lindley had every opportunity to come forward. She lied to cover up her guilt, and she murdered my brother to profit from his death. Lindley Rennick is a murderer. She will always be a murderer. This is a victim advocate statement, and I'm supposed to let you know about all the lives that have been affected by this tragedy. Well, Ben's children have lost the most. We have not seen my brother's children since Ben's funeral service in 2017. Despite constant attempts, all efforts to connect my children with theirs have been blocked for years. For the three years that she went out, she was out before the arrest, and then the two years that she spent on house arrest with an ankle monitor. We haven't seen my brother's children in five years, and here we are now waiting for them to heal. We know that they have been told lies, many of the lies that Lindley perpetrated, perpetuated throughout this process. We hope that April and Jonathan find it in themselves to do what's best for the children at all times. And when the time is right, please allow us to reunite our family. They have an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a two-year-old cousin that would love to know them. Lily never mentioned her third child during this trial, a fact of particular disgust. It never benefited her to bring up her youngest child, as she had him after the murder in her new life. We know more about this young child than we do my brother's children. When we didn't have access to them, we took comfort in knowing that this young boy was in good hands with his father and his family. There are a lot of victims in this case, from the very young and innocent to the multiple broken families and divorces that have happened as a result of Lindley's influence. The web of devastation travels far. Unfortunately, you cannot choose your parents, and certain mistakes cannot be undone. I'm hesitant to mention the farm. If you know the story, you know that my father took his own life so that we could keep that property. At the time of Ben's murder, he was holding onto my ownership shares of the land, and once he was killed, Lindley inherited that property that my family maintained for almost 40 years. Without notice, Lindley, without notice from Lindley, she promptly decided to sell our family farm out from underneath us, uprooting both my children and hers, literally breaking the family apart. I'm hesitant because the property was purchased by a wonderful, hardworking family who have paid their respects to us, and we wish them the very best moving forward. Losing the farm, however, was devastating. It was like someone else had died. Smug. Ben and I had been growing, Ben and I had grown up together on that land. When my mother finally passed at home, per her wishes, I held my brother's, my, when my mother finally passed at home, per her wishes, I held my brother's hand, promising her that I would take care of the farm for our children. My wife and I spent a small fortune attempting to maintain that property only to have our investments stolen when it was sold by Lindley. She abandoned my brother's belongings, an act that shocked even the highway patrol, leaving behind wedding albums only to auction off my brother's collectibles. Selfish, unexplainable actions. After the murder, we requested that Ben's ashes be returned to us so they could be reunited with the rest of my dead family. Despite multiple requests, we have never heard a response. Please tell me that you're keeping my brother's remains for Emma, or I demand that you return them to us immediately. 
It should never again be touched by Lyndon's hand. The waves of this tragedy traveled far. My young brother was just getting started on a journey that was cut short by selfishness and greed. Please give my brother the, dust, the justice he deserves and seek the maximum possible sentence for Lindley Renner. I want to end by thanking all the people involved in this case, including Devin Faust, Nathaniel Nat Schaefer, uh, our wonderful victim advocate, Melissa Cutting, our prosecution team, and Marshall Franks for making sure I didn't leave the pew. Thank you all for this opportunity and God bless. May Benjamin Riddick please rest in peace. That's correct. Why not? I was um, hoping that the evidence would speak for itself. Okay, you feel like you're a lot of faith in it, right? Oh, yes. But not at the trial. Uh, if I could do it again, I would. You must be a question. Oh, and who sold the farm after the guy was sentenced? Lily Rennick sold that farm. Who sold the farm? You know who sold the farm. Uh, Charles Stahl sold the farm on Lily Rennick's behalf. Do you got any redirect? All right, thank you so much. Thank Step you. down. Okay, any further evidence? You got any evidence? All right, let's argue punishment. What do you want me to do? Mr. Hessman. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I understand that the range of punishment here is between 10 and 15 years. Um, we're asking that a minimum of 20 year sentence is concurrent, so we'll go for the 13 years. Uh, that's only three years less than what um, the state is asking for, Your Honor. Um, the jury in this case, Your Honor, said they wanted 13 and 3. They did not say, however, Yeah, it's 13 and 3, right? What would you say about 10? Well, as I understand it, Your Honor, you can go both. Okay, all right, I see what you're saying. So, I don't think a 13-year sentence... The minimum would be 10 on count one. I got you, I got you. I don't you. think a 13-year sentence is against the jury's wishes, Your Honor, because the jury never came out and said that they wanted to run consecutive or concurrent. Um, and I would think that 13 years to 3 would be an odd number to grab and, and say that they wanted to run consecutive. Your Honor...
trial judge instruction from the Home Sweet Home that she was seated. There was never any problems out of her at all, and there were never any problems out of her when she was in her seat. We're asking for a court-worthy remand here, and we're asking for the same remand here that the jury gave Jeremy Reynolds based on the evidence that was presented in the trial. And I don't mean to be inflammatory, Your Honor, but I don't think the state is really in any position to object to us asking for a court remand here. When Ashton Shaw got nothing out of this, and they feel that she was a participant in this, Rachel Hunt got nothing out of this. Michael Humphrey had his charges for the effect of this, and Brandon Blackwell, who was in jail and made these allegations in the first place, is going to bail his charges after he learns the trial just when this jury thing is dismissed. So we don't think, based on that, Your Honor, that it's asking too much to give three years off of what the state is asking for in a remand. Everybody done? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Defendant will please rise. State adduces evidence. Parties argue punishment. Punishment fix count one, 13 years. Count two, three years. Said sentences to run consecutively and not concurrently. Is there any legal cause why judgment sentence should not now be pronounced upon you? Hearing no legal cause why judgment sentence should not now be pronounced upon you, it is the judgment sentence of this court that you be confined in an institution to be designated by the Department of Corrections of the State of Missouri for a period of 13 years on count one and three years on count two. Said sentences to run consecutively unless sooner discharged by due operational law, allocution, judgment, and sentence. Sheriff authorized one deputy to deliver the defendant to the Department of Corrections. Defendant given credit for time served. Civil judgment in accordance with law. I'm going to read you Supreme Court Rule 2915 because I have to. A person convicted of a felony after a trial claiming that the conviction or sentence imposed violates the Constitution and laws of this state or the Constitution of the U.S., including claims of ineffective assistance of trial and appellate counsel, that the court imposing the sentence was without jurisdiction to do so, or that the sentence imposed was in excess of the maximum sentence authorized by law may seek relief in the sentencing court pursuant to the provisions of this rule. This rule provides the exclusive procedure by which that may be done. If you want to file this and if no appeal of such judgment or sentence is taken, it has to be filed within 180 days of the date the judgment or sentence becomes final for purposes of appeal. If an appeal is taken, the motion shall be filed within, which apparently it won't be, within 90 days after the mandate of the appellate court issues affirming such judgment or sentence. No cost deposit will be required from you. If you don't have the money to hire a lawyer, a lawyer would be appointed at that time to represent you on the matter. And do you still feel like you've been effectively represented by counsel? Uh, Supreme Court Rule 2915 given and court finds no probable cause to believe the defendant has not been effectively represented by counsel. Mr. Hesseman kind of got into the heads of what the jury might have been thinking. I don't know what they were thinking. He doesn't really know what they were thinking. He's drawn his conclusions, and I've drawn mine. Somehow they got confused. In my view, taking you out of the equation, his brother would still be alive. I don't understand how you're going up there at one minute you want a divorce and to get Mr. Humphrey mad enough to kill. I don't know. It doesn't matter if he killed. You were the one that put him up to it. You're awful lucky, ma'am. You're going to get out in your 40s, and my 40s weren't too bad. I just hope you don't kill again. That's it. Okay, Mr. Knight, well, let me see who all's on here. Yeah, Mr. O'Connor's on here. Just a second. Okay, this is...